Hello, welcome to another session uh, of Questions of Doubt in Corporate Evaluation. My name is still Bernhard Schwetzler. Now, today's question of doubt is, are pension reserves part of the equity bridge or part of the net debt in DCF corporate valuation models? Remember, in one of our last sessions, we have tackled the problem of uh, estimating properly the costs of the pension reserve itself. Uh, and our recommendation, or my personal recommendation, was that um, as long as we don't have any internal information and are outsiders to the firm that we valued, uh, that we should close our eyes and firmly wish that the wage substitution rate um, of the service cost is equal to 100%, because this yields the convenient result that the, the applied costs of the, of the pension reserves are equal to uh, the interest costs in the profits and loss statement uh, of the firm. Yeah? So, and we will work now with this assumption. Uh, and with this knowledge, we are now able to tackle um, two related questions. Uh, and these questions are, are the pension reserves part of the equity bridge uh, of the net debt when moving from the enterprise value to the equity value? And shall the pension reserves cost be part of the WAC when using the DCF valuation? And the answer on these two questions depends on whether we uh, are working with a full-fledged or with a reduced um, version of the entity approach in DCF. Yeah, the full-fledged version takes the debt uh, as the sum of the pension reserves and the interest-bearing debt, whereas the reduced one only takes the straight debt into account. So let's look at the two versions and what that means for the free cash flow and the WAC definition and our equity bridge. We start with the full-fledged entity approach. So this approach takes the equity holders, the straight debt holders, that is the bank and the bond holders, and the pensioners and or uh, the employees as the relevant investors to be taken into account. Eh? And that means that the cash flow uh, that we're working here, the free cash flow definition is to be split into these three groups, yeah, into the, the cash flow to the equity holders, to the straight debt holders, and to the pensioners. And that means that it shall include, still include, any flow of funds that goes between the pensioners and employees and the firms uh, and should not be adjusted for this. Yeah? So, in that sense, neither the interest as the cost nor any inflow or outflow as a redemption or a new credit intake uh, shall be adjusted for in our free cash flow definition. And that also already answers then the question with respect to the WAC, because if the relevant free cash flow goes into the pockets of the three classes of investors, then of course the WAC shall also be the weighted average um, cost of capital over the three sources um, of um, investors that we look at that is, uh, our costs for the pension reserves shall be part uh, of our WEC definition. So if we now take this uh, free cash flows to the three investor classes and discount it with a WEC um, as the weight average cost of capital of the three over the three investor classes, then of course we get the enterprise value as the sum over the present values of the equity holders, the straight debt holders, and the pensioners slash um, employees. And that means that, of course, we have to deduct the pension liabilities um, as uh, a part of the relevant debt on our way uh, to the value of the equity. So pension liabilities are part of the equity bridge. So now let's look at our reduced entity approach. Uh, this approach, um, only takes uh, into account equity holders and straight debt holders as the relevant uh, investors. And that means that we have to sort out any flow uh, of funds that goes between uh, the employees uh, and, and uh, the pensioners as a redemption or a new credit intake. And of course, we also have to uh, adjust for the cost of this, of this um, source of funds. Yeah? So you see here, um, that we have, of course, first to deduct and adjust for the interest cost of pensions. They have to be deducted. So in that sense, the, the adjusted notepad is just the notepad that is uh, left for, um, for straight debt uh, and equity holders. 
And then you see here that any credit intake that is, uh, in that sense, the new service cost that is paid back by our employees and any redemption that is um, uh, the pension paid and any accrued interest, which is, of course, a new uh, credit um, to the firm, is here taken together as the delta of the pension reserves in one block and is uh, adjusted for. Yeah? And that means that the free cash flow that is left over is just the free cash flow to be split between equity holders and straight debt holders. And that means that the WAC is also just, uh, in that sense, um, uh, containing straight debt cost and cost of equity. So pension liabilities costs are not part of the WAC anymore. Um, and that also means that the enterprise value in this case um, is uh, the enterprise value of uh, debt holders, straight debt holders and equity holders, and thus pension liabilities are not part of the net debt anymore because we adjusted here for the flow um, of uh, funds between the firm and our pensioners and employees. Yeah? So a nice way to highlight the difference between the two is this famous Merton Miller pizza uh, example. Um, because it nicely shows that uh, the full-fledged uh, approach here, entity approach, is a three pizza slice approach. That is, the pizza slice is straight debt holders, uh, pensioners and employees and equity holders. And so we have a three pizza free cash flow. We have a pizza slice free cash flow. We have, a, uh, in that sense, uh, a threefold whack. Uh, and of course, um, the pension reserves are part um, of the equity bridge, whereas here our re reduced version is just a two pizza slice approach. So the free cash flow is to be adjusted for all flows um, that go to the pensioners uh, and uh, come from the employees. The WAC is just straight debt and equity and uh, pension reserves are not part of the net debt. So which of the two approaches um, is the correct one? Well, in that sense, uh, under ideal conditions, both approaches should yield the same results. So in that sense, it's a matter of taste um, and convenience, which of the two you would prefer. As I said, in both cases, um, under ideal conditions, the results should be identical. So that's it for today. Thank you.